Hello, everybody. Welcome to What Culture Gaming, and uh, we're going to run down the best games of the year. Who are we? Shouting quite a lot. I'm getting to the names, mate. I'm <laughs> Scott from What Culture. You're Jules. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Hey. I'm joined by Rich as well. Hello. Hey, fam. And Josh. Hello. Hey, bro. Hey, fam. <laughs> so, um, to do the best games of the year, we had a rather democratic process, um, which... Actually, I'll break down the rules of the democratic process after we've done <laughs> some honourable mentions, because these are the ones that we handpicked a little bit. Um, so we're going to have one each for these. So, Mr. Jules, feel free to go first, sir. So my honourable mention for the game of the year is Resident Evil 7. Now, I know that it wasn't to everyone's liking because, obviously, the VR stuff was great, but there were some kinks to it, and it was quite short, and it was a bit aimless at some point. However, deny me that that scene in the garage, fighting him, the, the Papa Bless, <laughs> when, he's, when he's in his car, and he's just shoveled some guy to death. You tell me that that's not game like of the year. shovels material. his head in half. It is, it is a phenomenally visceral game. It doesn't make the most sense, but I really enjoyed it from start to finish. I oh, Yeah, I liked it as well. I thought when you lose your arm, that was a hell of a thing. When they staple it back on, and it yeah, just regains just, complete like, functionality just again. Fine, uh, just go with it. Put a heart monitor on it. Uh, mine, this is an honourable mention, <laughs> this isn't in the top ten. <laughs> uh, my honourable mention is Super Mario Odyssey, uh, yep. which is just, it's just a delightful game from front to back. Sorry. I mean, you, the thing is, you know what to expect with the 3D Mario, and uh, Odyssey is one of those, obviously the most feature complete that they've made so far. And it's God, just lush. I mean, I mean the, the thing is, it's like, it's such a good game. Mm. And I know you've been raving about it quite a lot, so the things that are on the real list, they better be good. Well, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah, but, you'd I mean, think yeah. so. <laughs> well, oh, definitely oh, not goodness. a few questionable decisions mm. on our top ten. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yep. It's all fair. We're all responsible for like these questionable decisions though. It's not, not me. Well, you I'm, say we are. Well, I, I wasn't here, so I'm one of us blind. picked some. But anyway, dissension um, in the ranks. But yes, uh, <laughs> honorable mention Super Mario Odyssey. Over to you, Rich. My honorable mention this year is Sonic Mania, which should be in the top ten. Fight me. <laughs> Sonic Mania was the game this year that was sort of. You were going in expecting it to be great, and it delivers. It, oh my god, did it deliver. It's one of these <laughs> games I can go back, I can play it over and over and over and over, and listen to the soundtrack over oh. and over and over and over. Scott's the same. Well, oh, the interesting thing is, is that it's it's a game that highlights how bad Sega is at making their own games. Yes, so it's, it's kind not of made like, by Sonic Because <laughs> Sonic Forces was not as good as that. No. So fight me on that. Oh, no one's going to fight you on Sonic Forces. <laughs> they might on Devil May Cry 2013 being a bit oh, now. Oh, so how that's got so... a defendable force again. <laughs> anyway, on to Josh. Where have you Josh, been for the last Stewart. five years? Josh. Yes. Oh, I was yeah. trying to overshadow my honorable mention, which is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice in the best indie game of the year, probably. More like Hellblade Tenuous Puzzle oh. Game. Oh! Oh! Sacrifice is my life, Carol. All on. right, I'll give you that, because the puzzles were naff, especially towards the end. But the combat remained excellent throughout. And it was like a David Lynch show, like, so. No, more of a Darren Aronofsky film, if when that Whoa. goes completely insane, that's what Hellblade <laughs> was like, and it was the most unique thing I've played all year. Explains that you like Mother as well, didn't you? Damn right, best <laughs> film of the year, probably. No, it's not. <laughs> top five, though, top five. Anyway, top are five. you actually kidding me? <laughs> Mother is the top <laughs> five of the year. Oh, <laughs> that is a conversation for a so different <laughs> court hearing, that is, mate. <laughs> right. so, 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 so those were our honourable mentions. Now, what we did was we all went around, apart from Rich, because he's been in Porto, lucky bastard, on mm. holiday. And we went around and we basically were like, okay, what are our top 10, 15 games? Well, and then we narrowed it down. Yeah, so we initially had a big old list of about 30 games that sort of were like handpicked to be like the games of the year. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we whittled that down to 10 unordered games. And then we went, right, each of us gets that list of 10 and you order it 10 to 1. Um, your number one pick gets 10 points, number two gets 9 points, etc. And then I, t I totted all of these up so only I know what our games of the year list are. We have no these idea, guys have no, no idea. And we're gonna we're gonna read through them. I have written on here state of this <laughs> dot 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 <laughs> as a slight reflection as to how things went. But um, yeah, so we'll just we'll just run down these. This is our cumulative games of the year for 2017 from What Culture Gaming. In at number ten. In at number ten, Persona Five. Ooh. What? <laughs> You've only got yourselves to blame. Are you? You've only got yourselves me. to blame. Persona Five is such a good game, and you put it in at number that ten. Is a, that is a shock. To be honest, I am shocked. It only, you did I that to one. spite me, because, I, no. <laughs> no, because, because this is the thing. We sent off our, our nominations to Scott, and then Scott is the one that's correlating all of this. Oh, oh, sorry. Dropped your trophy what? in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you wanted Persona 5 to have more points, mate, you could have put it at number Shambles. one. I, I remember what your number one was, and it wasn't Persona 5. No, it wasn't. Ooh, so yeah, if you yeah, want to yeah, go yeah, there, yeah, 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 it should be at top five. Whatever. We'll whatever, number nine. I do think these things are worth uh, having a little discussion yeah. on. No! Persona yeah. 5 <laughs> might not be, might not be okay. deserve to be number ten. Persona 5, for me, 
has yeah, been, so it was only for you. Has had been a brilliant game that came at the right sort of time because it was fantastic story, really engaging characters. I really enjoyed the the fighting mechanics. Obviously, the whole sort of like yeah. capturing the personas and stuff like that. Very very cool. I just really enjoyed the style and the. the it's the, go the, it's gorgeous presentation wise. Got good um, vibes from that game. The reason I knocked it down was just because I just didn't go on with the characters. I put seventy hours into it and didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. I just like for me, I I, I think that all the aesthetics and that stuff does hold it up. Mm. But I had to ask myself like, do I care about any of these arcs that are ongoing? And I didn't. And I just I hated Morgana. I hated all this the way that they portray Anne. I hated all that stuff. I love Assassin's Creed Origins, though, doesn't he? It's just really good, man. <laughs> it's really good. Oh, yeah, no. So what, what, why? It's not even in here. How come you just got to seventy hours and then just thought that was it? That's it, me done. Well, that was well, that was I because it's Persona because I love Persona Four. I kept giving it more time. I was like, well, I'll go back to it. I'll play a bit more. Maybe something will click. Maybe something will happen. Maybe some character will do something memorable. And they just never did. Well, and I, I hate how restrictive I, I Morgana is. I don't write well. it off as that. I mean, you're you're entitled to your own personal views, mate. But I just think Sadly, that yeah. for me. Me, there was a lot of memorable things that were going on, and while it is not as good as Persona 4 Golden, because let's face it, that is pretty much the testament. And Ben got me onto that one, yeah. so that was really good. Mm -hmm. Persona 5 was a worthy successor to that, and I'm glad to see it doing well. Like that, well. that is an important <laughs> game for that franchise for it to do well, so it can continue on. Yeah, I mean that's it. Like it's whatever. There's a lot of pros and cons to it. It didn't mm. click with me, hence why I didn't put it higher. Clay didn't click with you guys either, hence the fact that it didn't go much higher. But don't worry, because the next game on here is sure to bring about a smile. Okay. Number nine is the Evil Within two. Whoa! Uh, what that low down? I'm right. not that surprised to be honest. No, me neither. <laughs> to be honest, and I loved it. But that for me, that was that was top five of the year. That was easy I, top five. Uh, of the why year. though? Uh, because Jules. Okay. Because. <laughs> <laughs> about to convince all of us across I, the I'm last few try, days. I'm gonna try because I know you hate it, Scott. I don't um, hate it. I absolutely. I have a lot half. of love for the Evil Within, but I think right. it peters out in the second half like mm. a lot. Well, that's the thing for me, it perfectly recommend. balances old school horror, survival horror with like a new, with, with new genres, because it's got open world elements in. So that's sandbox horror stuff where you're just going into, you're going into houses, you're like, what is going to be behind this door? And it was often like a big thing, just hiding there. Like there was throwbacks to old games, there was a lot of Kojima-esque stuff. Mm. And I thought that open world thing was really good. Mm. And yet, you still got the line the, the, the linear <laughs> action there yeah, is. that Resident <laughs> Evil 4 and the Evil Within nil so brilliantly. Mm. And I will concede that the enemies, especially in the latter half, were left a lot to be desired. I mean, that's the thing. Like, ultimately, like but, I've still reviewed this. I still think that it's one of the most innovative horror games like of the decade. Mm -hmm. And I still had a hell of a time with it. It's just that I can't say it's one of the 10 best games of the year. Right. So when you came out with that, I was like, oh my god, what the hell? But it's still a very, very good game, and it's still very recommendable. Cool. But whatever, you can eat us alive in the comments for that. Number eight Ooh. is Pyre. Mm. Not that surprised to see Pyre quite low down. I wish, was higher. I wish it was higher as well, because it's a fantastic little indie gem. And I mean, it's made by Supergiant Games. Yeah. They, they haven't put a foot wrong since they came out with Bastion, Transistor, and now this. It's like, And then choosing two genres, RPG like <laughs> elements, with a sports game. It's like choose they, your own adventure and then yeah, NBA they Jam. They shouldn't work, but they do. And it's a really, really funny. And the visuals are fantastic. Oh, it's yeah. a game that you, the more you put into it and the better you get, the more you lose and have to sacrifice. Well, and that's a lovely message. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the thing is like, the, the whole crux of Pyre is that like, you're basically playing as a whole bunch of outlaws and wanderers and whatever. Mm -hmm. They were exiles. They were going to play this like ball sports, orb sports game to win their freedom. Do you want to play some orb sports? Orb sports? <laughs> yes, please. And so every time that happens, you uh, one person can go free, which means that your best player, potentially your best friend in the game is also also the one that you empathize the most with and know they have to go free so you're yeah. losing your best friend yeah. over and over again or you can say to them well I don't think you should go free and then you keep your best player but then maybe someone else goes free and that sort of changes the dynamic of the conversations and everything else it's an immaculately yeah. well put together mm -hmm. game especially from just a presentation standpoint it's one of those things where I'm not even sad to see it low down the list I'm just happy sad to see it on, I'm sad I'm happy to see it on the list so <sighs> okay okay from here on out we're we're all right Ish. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> this one's good. Number seven, Injustice 2. Which Ooh, I am more wow. than happy for Injustice 2. This low down. Yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, as a, as, a fighting, competition. as a fighting game, though, can you name me a better fighter this year? Well, no, that's the thing. And the only major competition that it had all year was Tekken 7. And Tekken 7 didn't even make our top 10. Well, this thing that that Tek Tekken, yeah. Tekken 7 was a really well put together fighting game mechanically 
but I just didn't like the story mode. And I thought that they mm. t- they hyped that up so much yes. that I was therefore disappointed more. Well, if they just said it has a story mode, I'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that they pushed it quite a lot in the um, They definitely dropped the ball with the uh, the journalist guy. I think they, mm. they get there with Kazuya versus Heihachi because they mm. promised us mm. that one of them would die and sans spoilers, one of them dies. Mm. And I like the way that went, but yeah, like Tekken was more Tekken, whereas Injustice fundamentally felt like a more I don't know, complete game. I mean, yeah, like, like way more to it. If you were to break down the like, the elements that make up Injustice mm. 2, you've got a fantastic character roster. The mm-hmm. fighting game mechanics of like they've just been polished from Injustice yeah, 1, yeah. and they're really good. The story is really well told and beautiful. <laughs> yes. I know it's I know it's over the top and no, no. I was going to say like, at the same time, it's just, yeah. like, it's beautiful to look at and like the facial animations. It's the best DC themed <laughs> thing we've had all year, considering DC haven't had a good track record this yeah. year. Like mm-hmm. Injustice 2, if you want some DC yeah. product done well, Injustice 2 is the thing. Like and then the loot system's actually yeah. quite good. Like Gosh, you, you never hear you can't even say in twenty seventeen. Jeez. Hello. Yeah. That's interesting you said that was low yours, because for me I mean that was where what did you say? What the, I, I said it was, I thought it was low. I thought the injustice would be high because it is right. so like it's permeated the yeah. gaming landscape at the moment. But it is the only fighting mm. game on that. Top I think 10? it's yeah, yes. I think it is. Yeah. Yes, yes it is. Ah. They're the only real like other fighting games worth talking about this year were like Tekken Seven and I think Guilty Gear had a major update. I know that a few people will be screaming Marvel vs. Capcom in things, but it just is <laughs> <laughs> All three of you, I, you're wrong. I don't know, I didn't play it. I enjoyed it, but it just wasn't as good. No, I heard it nothing yeah. but negative things. I thought it was <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't okay. worry about it. On to greener pastures, number six, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. Ooh. Which Ooh. was your game of the year. Yeah. Ooh, Which was my rich. game of the year. Hey. On that list, it was my game of the year. Right. Take the floor. Well, <laughs> it's weird actually, because when I've gone back to look at Wolfenstein 2, like, sort of retrospectively after I played it, mm-hmm. not to think it was worse than I initially thought, but I feel mm. like I want to go back and play it again, because I, I don't want to say I rushed it, but sometimes when I look at the fact that I finished it in what six hours, yeah, eight sure. hours, yeah, yeah. I thought, was that just me not playing it right? Or I think it is what? a very short campaign. It is like, a short yeah. campaign, I th- and the, the, the general consensus for the end appeared. The, the, a lot of people have said that the end is very blunt and very mm. eh. And I think that's probably <laughs> why I've looked back at it and wondered whether my sort of my love for it was justified or not. Mm. Um, but because it's a Wolfenstein game, I love the first one yeah. so much. Yeah. This it, because I because I got Wolfenstein two this year and I got to play it. It just made me so happy to play it again. Well, just, just like to play back in that universe mm-hmm. to play back as BJ. Yeah, I mean we all voted it fairly highly for it to get this high anyway. And like I had it in my top five. I, I think Wolfenstein two is just a masterful game. Like I, yeah, the middle difficulty is cheap, but if you knock it down, that's the only conceit you have to have for that game. I think the cutscenes, the characters, some of the set pieces in that game are some of the best things I've ever seen. The whole the really? public yeah oh god yeah the, the public Which, square scene to keep it vague as hell that's, yeah, is yeah, one of the yeah, greatest yeah, well, the, moments. The only thing about that is that's the kind of the only one you get. Yeah. Oh, it's, what? It's, the, well, it's the only one with payoff. Because the rest of it are kind of like they're very teasing. It's a teasing game. I, like, I would say it opens so strong. Mm. Like, you know, like when you go to a magic trick and you see a woman being cut in half, and then you have sex with both halves. This is what this game is. <laughs> it's a game of two halves. And basically, like the first. Football. Yeah, oh, I could have <laughs> yeah. said that. That would have been an easier one. Yeah. Basically, it's the first half of the game up until that point is okay. It is. It is it, a fun. It is a. It's a well-developed shooter, but it's not fun. When you start getting the extra powers, when you start getting the like the more flu- like fluidity in your movements, <laughs> that's when it becomes fun. I would say that the whole that whole first it's, half. No, no, it's, it's like, more of a grind. It is much but more. No, of a it's grind. meant to be though. It's no, meant I, to be. I know, you... I know, it's meant to be. But how is that fun for a player? Well, like, I, I think it's surmountable though. I think the challenge is there. I think it is cheap if you have it on the higher difficulties, <sighs> but the challenge right. is there. Right now, Scott said something yesterday which we should bemoan. Go on. Mm. He said. If you are, if you want to enjoy this, just lower the difficulty. That's what I just said. No, but but why should you have to lower the difficulty well, to get a good player experience? You don't have to, but I think it's but one you of you said you have to. Well, it, I would recommend it. I don't think you have to. If you're I, one of those I like, I'll just I keep trial and error till I win. I don't know because I'm I'm one of those just trial and error push through it guys, mm-hmm. and I've I, I've st- I struggled to get through Wolfenstein too, right. just because the Same. shooting just isn't isn't where it needs to be, especially compared to Doom. It's just not mm. it's not fluid enough. It's not tactile enough. The health system doesn't work as well as it should. I don't think it, it's, it's not. I feel I feel it's not knowing. Where you're being hit from. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's, that, yeah. let's all agree that, that is the biggest. Downfall. No, of course. Hence why there, it's there, me, were, like, there were numerous moments where I dropped the difficulty six. just to get past something yeah, because I'm sick yeah. to death of dying. So, but in Doom, for example, and I know that we shouldn't really compare them. They are very different things, but they are running on effectively the same engine. They are running and, on the same. And engine. they are both about empowerment as well. So basically, whereas 
Jesus. BJ Blazkowicz is charging towards something and they're getting shot to pieces. Doomgust just jumping off here, mm. chainsawing, ripping somebody apart. But that, that they are mechanic mechanically of, very different. Get, yeah. Getting health back and ammo from killing people up close should have carried over into Wolfenstein. I'm just putting it out there. I, I think I would have made like, it too similar. I quite like, in a way, I like the struggle because it pays off after yeah. that moment. Yeah. Yeah. But For me, there's just there's, there's a strange dissonance between the way it presents violence, like the, the confident opening when you're, without to spoil too much, well, I guess the opening. Yeah. Yeah. When you're on like, you're in the wheelchair, you're just like blowing guys yeah. away. Like that is so empowering and cool, but mm -hmm. as soon as you get out of there and into like a super powered suit, I felt so fragile and I was right. like, well, well, this isn't, this is this, this is at odds with the character mm -hmm. that's being presented. I'm like, I'm supposed to be this but that's... badass super, super guy yeah. and I'm getting ripped to shreds. I don't know where I'm getting shot from. My health's just ticking down yeah. and I'm dead and I'm done. So, mm -hmm. so, com so throwing this discussion back to the review, we made loads and loads of comments and quips about how, how, it, how it's got its problems. It's still a great game. Yes, yeah, I still yeah. think it's a And, we, and we should move on. Story. Fantastic. Gameplay just lagging behind it a little bit. If yeah. they tweak the difficulty and made it more obvious where you were getting shot from and tweak the health system, it would be perfect. Yep. Yeah. I'd, yeah I'd, Which is still I'd enough for it to grant a number six position. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Let's keep going. Number five, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm assuming that was your number one. It was. It's very good to see that closer in the top three. I mean, if I yeah. Have would have. I've not played it. So, I, so, think, so I, hands up, I did put this as number ten, the lowest mm -hmm. ranking I could because I've not actually played this game. So... It's a damn fine game. I, I mean, yeah, Breath of the Wild is my number one. Like, uh, when I write them up on the site, it'll be number one on there. Like, in terms of the, all the games, if I'm going to do a much bigger one, then that'll be that. It's just, like, it represents everything you love about gaming. Like, it doesn't have any microtransactions or loot or any ancillary systems that take you away from just gameplay. And it just works. Like, every single part of it just comes together. There's hardly any protracted tutorials. Mm. It's just, like, it's just, it's pure. There's a real artistry to it. And they obviously delayed it a whole chunk to make sure they could perfect it. Yep. And it just, it just feels so gorgeous. Like, well, I absolutely love Breath of the Wild. I've not seen or heard anyone who's played it come back and say that they didn't like it. Every no. single person has said there is something, even if they're not massive sort of open world RPG fans, they come back to me and say like, this is still a phenomenal, like, yeah, game. yeah, really, and beautiful as well. And it, the, the soundtrack's amazing, and everything. So to, to look at it, the game is like a piece of art, sort of thing. That's yeah, that's the general feeling that you get is that it's not designed to take advantage of you. And to make an extreme example, how something like Battlefront Two or Agents of Mayhem or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever, like those games that we've seen them more of this year than ever. Yeah, like those yeah, sort of true. really mechanical, synthetic games. And you you kind of go like, well, games. Everyone always says games were better when they were growing up. This is one of those games, and it proves that games weren't better when you were growing up. There's just a different mark of quality mm. or different trends were in at that time if yeah. you want a return to that feel breath of the wild is that game and yeah. for someone else for a whole new generation it'll be there originally yeah, to the past or whatever yeah, totally it's just it's a phenomenal experience so what number is that that was number five, five. okay fair enough Top <laughs> four okay is on. crash band a cute yes! Insane trilogy. Top five yes i totally I, deserved it should be number one i agree fair. well I'm just saying that to him. Anyway, we we <laughs> did it all week. So this is the thing. Like, oh, is it? I, I fully accept that Crash Bandicoot doesn't feel authentic in Crash Bandicoot 1 and 2. But 3... So two thirds of the game. No, 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 no. I'm just saying the word authentic. But I'm oh. not saying that it's, a, it's in any way less enjoyable. I really love oh. this game. You've platinumed it. I platinumed like, all three of them. Yeah, to get three ones. Ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is. It is a great game. It is a blast from the Mate, past. Mate, I'm like not saying it's not a great game. But, but it was a great game in 1997. Yeah, but that's. And 1998. Not 2017. I think it's was fundamentally eight. what a Crash Anti Trilogy brings to the table that wasn't there before. But that's the question. What is it? What do you? It need doesn't. It doesn't need to. to. Like, it's, but it's then play the original. It's, it's, you're you're no. admitting it's the same game from 20 years ago. But that's. I mean, that's the. Well, it was rebuilt from the ground up. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah I mean, so, so technically. And they messed up the physics for two thirds of it. Listen, I I really enjoyed oh, it. Oh, democracy. Yeah. That was it. Was the game I had the most fun with yeah. all year. Wow. Bring on the sky, the Skyro. Bring on the <laughs> bring, <laughs> bring on the Spyro remaster collection. Yes. Yeah. That's, but that's but get it right. Yes. Um, okay, number three, we're into the top three. Number Ooh. three is Cuphead. Fair enough. Ooh. Which I love the fact that Cuphead yeah. got yep. so high. Yeah, fair enough. I'm well up for Cuphead. I mean, have, have any of us actually finished it? No. Uh, <laughs> no. I'm two bosses off the end. I can't actually finish that game. I'm still uh, on Inkle Isle 3. I am I am up against uh, Dr. Carl's robot. Right. Oh, and I thought you you finished the, you beat the devil, didn't you? I beat, I've beaten the We've devil. We've definitely talked I, about I've beaten the devil. the devil, but I haven't actually like finished, finished the game. As in right. Yeah, all yeah, well, that's all it means. You've seen the I've the contracts. I've finished the game, but it is, Oh, it's such a fun game. Yeah. Frustrating yeah. to mm -hmm. unparalleled levels. <laughs> 
and I will not use the word Dark Souls, but no. still, it's just a hard game. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. A, it's just a hard game. Like we talked about the trial and error mentality before of like punching through a game by just bashing your head against it until you break through. That is entirely what Cuphead is. Luckily, like those systems are so tight that when you do break through, it feels phenomenal. Yep. And you're like, you, I've can go, been... you can go back and beat the boss every single yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this yeah. is the thing. I don't think I'll ever forget the message I received from Scott the first night he played Cuphead, and he couldn't get through the first level, and I got a tirade. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got a tirade. I mean, you eventually did, but you were just like, Josh, what is this game? <laughs> I can't believe I spent money on this game. It's too hard. It's broken. It's broken. No, no, that's not true. Is it? Yeah, I've got the message. Yeah, I say that a lot, but I don't think I said that about Cuphead. No, you, you came around with it. Just that was the initial right. gut reaction. Then you like oh, about half an hour later, he was like, "No, that's great." It's, it's, it's good. Good. <laughs> it's, um, oh, it's that's the first run and gun level. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's oh, the, right. it, that sucks. It's, but yeah, art style soundtrack as well. Oh, yeah, the, you know, the, yeah, the fact that they managed to do all these like hand drawn, all these amazing drawings, they actually hand animated every single one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And the soundtrack, the presentation, no other game looks like that. And it, it's it's phenomenal mm. for that alone. But the fact that it's all backed up by gameplay just makes it even better. And there's, what, something like 14 new bosses on the horizon. They've announced that they're doing DLC packs for it. So there is much more pain to come. Yeah, still gonna finish the, the base yeah. game, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still gonna do that. So that was number three. That was number three. So the top two are one of the ones that you could, probably, could probably have assumed was always gonna be at the top. If you take Zelda out of the equation, there's only one other game that's been talked about this much across the year. And it's not oh, right. yeah, number yeah, yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, okay, I know. Number two is Nier Automata. Uh, which I, two. Which was both uh, of your favourite, was both yes. your games of the year. Yeah. I'm so, pleased it got that high, I've got all about I it. Played it. I, so. You forgot all about it. I did, I did, I did. <laughs> I forgot about it. <laughs> I really wanted to like Nier more than I did, but this is a number two spot, so you guys champion it. Feel free to say nice things. Right, okay. I'm not even, even going to address why you don't like it. I Fine. think the reasons to like this game are it throws everything at the wall and what sticks is a lot. Like, enjoyable characters, a weird storyline that asks you to read a lot into it. The combat system is fun. The weird little mini games, sort of top-down shooters, I love that they just breach into that. It's a game that is a massive grind, mm. effectively, because you are just fighting things over and over again. You've got to finish it three times to get everything. Yeah, but I, I don't know why, but I found it so easy to do that. I just found like I was just like rushing through it. I loved it. I, I mean, look, I think, I, it's, I think it's because I love Dynasty Warriors. I, uh, lo I love unashamedly. I've bought every <laughs> single Dynasty Warriors, Gundam Warriors, Samurai Warriors, One Piece Warriors for. F Sake. You have a problem. And I do have a problem. So for me, <laughs> having another butting, bashing, sort of like. Well, it's a platinum game. Like, I mean, fighter, yeah, yeah. like oh, I loved it. I should have loved it more. And I do. Uh, the thing is, right? The reason that I mean, I put it at like number six or something. I think mm -hmm. is like that opening, and it does this throughout the game, where it pretty much blends like three genres into one by just yeah, moving man, the camera that around. Was that good. is phenomenal. That is good. And it, it has it has some great moments. I actually really enjoyed Route B, doing all the like the top down stuff, the mini game stuff, little the, hacking things. Yeah, the hacking yeah. stuff was great. Like I, I like the fact that the soundtrack changes to be all like eight yeah, bit that, or whatever. Yeah, digitized. That was really good. There's just so, there are so many great stylistic things in there, mm -hmm. and the stuff that it tries to hang itself on, all the philosophical stuff, and like, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to mm -hmm. have emotions? Like, whatever. That stuff is great, but I think the conversations that come after it are more interesting than anything that's actually in the game. I get that it starts those conversations. Yeah. But that's that's the thing that knocks it down. And plus, I was so burnt out by the time I got to Route C. Like, it's um, just... I can see once you've gone through the world and you're doing the same missions types yeah. again and again, I can see that fatigue would set in. I think it's just because I enjoyed going through and seeing slightly different things each time. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. The, like the guts of it, the mechanics of it are phenomenal. Like mm -hmm. the actual, the way that you play that game is great. And some people, the, the, the philosophical stuff is going to click. And some of the stuff, I mean, uh, the creator, Yokotaro, like he did this in the first Nier. Um, again, sans spoilers, but there's a thing that this game does in terms of breaking the fourth wall if you get root E. I know the one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. one of the things that, again, for some people, they'll chat, they'll be like, that was unlike anything else. And that in itself makes it uh, so championable. I mean, I my, it ends, when it when my good. friend got to that point, he uninstalled the game and swore to never play it. And he said, if I if it wasn't my game that I gave him to play it on, he would have snapped the disc. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, everyone liked it, but I loved it. Yeah. No, but he could be doing that in service of the story, depending on how he came true, out. True, true. It, you'll, you'll have to yeah, see it. All yeah, it all feeds in. Yeah. It all feeds in. Um, so this leaves us with our number one game of the year, which if you haven't already guessed, is Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, I thought it was going to be World War II Call of Duty. <gasps> I thought it was going to be Rock of Ages, did you? Rock of Ages 2, out now. Game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our number one game is Horizon, which is yeah, easily the most surprise, accessible but... and one of the one of the best written games of the year. Like because it came out so long ago, it's quite easy to forget how much yeah. of an impact that thing made. I but had the DLC come out phenomenal. recently as well. Yeah, it's Frozen Wilds was great, but like the main the main crux of Horizon, once it all clicks and once you start going underground and like figuring out like what the hell is going on, where are these machines coming from, like what is my agency in this world, like it delivers on all of those things. It doesn't hold anything back for the sequel apart from one final post credits tease. Mm -hmm. You get answers 
answers to everything, and they're all so satisfying. Um, I had an absolute blast with Horizon. That was my number two. Shout out to Ashley Birch, who is uh, pretty much Alleged. my biggest crush in gaming Ooh. at the moment, and a fantastic voice actress as well. <laughs> Could have led with that. <laughs> nah. No. Mm, I chose my words well. I, 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 awesome. I talked about a woman being sawn in half earlier on. I don't want to. Yeah, you've already redeemed you yourself. She's nominated for an award at the Game Awards. Good for her. It is yes. very good for her. But yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn is our number one game of the year, which is a well worn thing. And I'm just so glad that Crash didn't win the damn thing. I'm so glad it came in. Was it top five? This is number <laughs> four. Is it number four? Top, yeah, yeah, top I think five. My, my entire week has been. M. Trolling. It's been. It's been it's, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, fine. <laughs> I'll stick with that. Yeah, that okay. is. It's good to see uh, all of these great games. And to be fair, though, there were tons more, and I'm sure that oh, yeah. you yeah. in the comments are letting us know very loudly uh, which ones that you would prefer to see on this list. So leave us a comment below. There'll be a lot of comments. A lot, a lot of comments below, positive comments. or negative, about Josh's hair or not, doesn't matter. <laughs> Every, no, no. <laughs> or Jules' gonna... lack of hair. <laughs> or my lack of hair, yeah, exactly. There, Every, there, is, oh, one, there is one more thing. What? Oh, hello. Which mm -hmm. is our sort of official. Honourable mention. Oh god, yeah. Game of the oh, year. Right, okay. Oh, yes. So it's pre, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah pre no. too. Yeah. yeah. Assassin's Creed Origins. Get, get out. So get out. This has been a topic of debate for a while now, especially after the the Golden Joysticks and the Game Awards, and that is the one, the only, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Yeah. Which has obviously completely flattened the industry and the market over the past sort of, what, nine months? Mm -hmm. It was March mm -hmm. it came out. And obviously the big debate as to whether it should be up for awards and things like that mm -hmm. is very, it is up for debate. And it, we was, did debate it, was, in the mm. it was in the original yeah. top 30. But it's the yeah. fact yes. that it's still unfinished. But it is still in early access yeah. and they keep right now. Doing new maps and but changing the, it. The and, argument yeah. that we've had is the game is coming out this year. Yeah. The 1.0 of the original uh, original PUBG, PUBG, whatever, mm -hmm. is coming out this year. Don't know when. Mm. It'll be in the next, what, you know, 20 odd days, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but it is coming soon. Yes. So that is our official honorable mention this year. So we had, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. We had one each, and then this is the collective this is, one. This, yes. is the, this, is the, uh, this is the official one. Because I know you're excited for Yeah, man, I mean, if this takes off, on Xbox. It takes off on consoles like it has on PC, mm -hmm. it'll be, I mean, there's already a whole ton of games that have started bringing Battle Royale modes in, from GTA yep. V to Fortnite yep. or whatever. You're already seeing the impact of this game. The only reason that it didn't make our official list is because it isn't finished. Yep. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, yeah, it's well worth honoring, and it, it is one of the games of the year, so Definitely. it's still in here. But um, yeah, man, we'll see how this goes next year when there's a final version of PUBG released into the wild to dominate everything else. Yeah, true that. But, but until yeah. that point, let us know what you think down in the comments section below. Give us your top 10 list as well. Disparage what we've already said or praise us with joy. Not with prayer, though. Not with prey. No. <laughs> then swing by whatculture.com for more news and articles like this every goddamn day. <laughs> so close. I'm having a stroke every day. <laughs> As always, I've been Jules. I've been Scott. I've been Rich. I've been Josh. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe below, and also there's probably more content flowing up above my head, so why not check that out as well? Could be a laugh. Probably. 6 out of 10.